Hi guys, very good evening to you all. Hope you're all fine and safe and I'm very happy to meet you all after a very long time. It's been a long break for us. And yeah, we are here to continue with the second topic today. Uh, we have already seen subject verb agreement and um, I have an open question just to uh, start with an interaction just to not miss communication between us. So if you have any issues in my audio, please let me know in the command section. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I have an open question and I want you to raise your hand or unmute your audio and then answer that. OK, so my question is. Um, I have been recently watching so many students from your college like they are so crazily uh, die hard fan of this movie KGF part one. OK, so I just want you to speak out. OK, speak out, not in the texting and all that. You should speak and I want you to speak. Uh, what are the three reasons that you think? Three reasons to like KGF part one. OK, so raise your hand or just unmute your audio and then just tell me because I, I badly want to know from you all. And uh, it's it's just an interaction session in the initial uh, few minutes. OK, um, so are you ready? Who is ready? Don't think about anything. Nobody is going to think that your English is bad because uh, even I at your age struggle to speak, but you should come friend to speak. Only then uh, after years you will speak well. OK, so. Think this is a classroom and come friend and then yeah. You're ready. To give your open views to me. Are you ready? Someone can raise your hand and I'll uh, see that in the lobby and then you can unmute and then you can speak. Let me see who is ready. I have not asked any technical question and logical aptitude question. I have just asked you in a way that you are comfortable with. So somebody is ready. You can raise your hand and then I mute your audio and then speak. Or I may have to call if you, if you want me to call some uh, person randomly. I can I'm ready for that. Hello guys, I'm waiting for you to speak. Will you please come out of your comfort zone and then just talk two lines. OK, so. Let me point out someone maybe. Likit KP. So Mr. Likit KP. You just unmute your audio. And. I have an another question for you. This is not the question. Let's make it more comfortable. OK. Like it, are you ready to unmute your audio? Can you hear me guys? Or if I'm speaking alone?
Uh, yes, guys, I am little disappointed because in the previous session, I think uh, one girl from your class had spoke, and even two other students had spoke to me in the teams, like while initial few minutes of interaction. But then I think after weeks, you lost that connection, maybe. And I asked this not to make you uncomfortable. I just asked this in order to uh, create a better rapport uh, in this which virtual class. OK, I understand it's difficult to come out of your comfort zone, but uh, but then try doing this. Uh, use these opportunities to speak because maybe one day uh, you may feel difficult to start all of a sudden. OK, so that day you'll miss out of words and maybe it's difficult to start all over again. So use these small, small opportunities. I am just not asking you to give speech and all that. Just two lines just out of a, a friendly conversation. That's it. Not a problem. I understand completely understand your situation. Maybe better uh, we can try giving you some time and next week or the next class that we meet, you should be ready. OK, so all of you. Uh, be ready with. Um, one minute conversation, OK, you just want to speak for one minute, but then it can be anything else that you can speak out. OK, it's just a friendly conversation. This is the reason movie I watched, ma'am, and I like this and I like the direction and I like the choreography. Uh, the acting is so good. The story is so good. So many things you can speak about. So yeah, just uh, be prepared for that in the next uh, class that we meet so that I can hear from you randomly uh, how how you are at the which stage you are in sort of communication. OK, so yeah, now no worries. We can proceed with the class. I understand. So next. Uh, Next thing is I'm just going to share uh, the PPT. Please let me know if you could see the screen or please let me know if the audio is not audible from my side. OK. Yes, guys, so today the topic is going to be about verbs. OK, so previously we have seen uh, how the subject and the verb agrees in a sentence and what are the different ways that they disagree and uh, how we should fit in them exactly. Right. So these are the rules that we have seen in the last class. That's for subject verb agreement. Now I'm going to just separate the verb alone out of that because Verb is the heart and soul of the sentence and verb is something that we depend upon so too much. OK, because whatever exercise you take, uh, you, you should be knowing that if the verb is having the correct form and uh, according to the subject and the tense, if it is exactly what is correct. OK, 
so many things out there with, that we should analyze when it comes to verb. OK, only if it is correct, uh, we can check the sentence uh, errors and all those things behind that. OK, so let's just take the verbs alone today and then uh, I'll just give you the basic recall or just overview of what a verb is and what are the types in the first few minutes and then we shall slowly get into the topic. Yeah, so in the last semester, I think we have seen verbs, but not very deep. OK, we, we have just seen uh, what is verb and their types and uh, some examples and uh, parts of speech, I think. And moving on to tenses. Yeah, we have seen according to the tenses how the verbs differ. OK, so all clumped together today. We'll just recall in the first few minutes and then we'll see what are the forms of verbs? This is what the exact topic today. Usage of proper forms of verbs. OK, so according to the tense and according to the sentence that is placed, you should use the verb in correct form. What is that form exactly? I'll tell you, but before that, we'll just give a foundation overview of this. So what is a verb exactly? Yeah, that we all know very well. It's just an action. OK, it's a doing word. It, it shows an action, an event or a state. OK, the. Sentence may have either of these verbs, OK, either of these verbs or more than one verb from this also. OK, so these are the types of verbs that you see in a sentence, whether it's a main verb, helping verb, linking verb, transitive and intransitive. And there is one more regular and irregular that is not a separate type that is one among these. OK, so we'll we'll slowly look into this one into. Type one, one by one and. As I said, a verb is a main word in the sentence, so uh, based on that. Like in other words, word is, verb is a word that informs about the action. OK, so it's a, it's like a existence of something or it's an occurrence. Who is doing this action? Uh, what action is being done? So many things. So here let me. Let us look into the types with the examples. OK, so you understand it better, so you recall it better. This is just a recall of the foundation uh, like. When we, when, when we are going to learn something, you should know what is the history of that? What is the foundation of that before, right? So today, you know, in, before moving on to forms of verbs, I just thought of recalling what is verb and types. OK, so here comes the main verbs or the action verbs. In a sentence. What we call as action is that subject is doing something so that will be called as an action, right? So what is the subject doing? That's what an action. That's what the verb to. So here, what is the main verb? Shines, nays and jumps, right? So by, by looking at the sentence, we can easily identify that. So the same. Verbs also signifying what that is the action done by the subject as well, right? So that is the action verb as well. Main or action verbs. This is what the first type. And the second type that you may have uh, come across in a sentence is that helping verbs. Helping verbs are like they are not the actual verbs, but then they are just helping to link the subject and then main verb, okay, or the action verb. So it's just a supporting, okay, helping verbs or just supporting. The main verbs. OK, so you would have seen so many uh, model verbs like this. You could, should, must and all that. All these are helping verbs. OK, remember that. It's just supporting the main verb. So let's take for example in the first sentence we are learning. Learning is the main verb. So who is supporting the learning? Are. Are is the helping verb here. Similarly in the third sentence you should complete. Complete is the main verb should. All these model kind of verbs, model verbs, which is should, must, could, would, all these are helping verbs because they don't make any meaning separately. But then when 
supporting when stand when standing with the main verb they give you the meaning okay that is what the role of helping verbs next comes the linking verbs linking verbs and helping verbs are more or less the same but what exactly the linking verb does is that it explains the link between the subject and the noun or adjective of the sentence okay so it's linked between something and something like in between it is standing okay so you could see previous to are the flaws are present which is subject bright is an adjective right so it is just linking the noun with the adjective so that's why we call this as linking verbs it's it's like it is not having action or helping and all that it is just linking the subject with the noun or the ad adjective that is what it does so i feel scared diamond is the hardest substance another place so diamond is on one noun hardest substance is another noun and the linking verb here is is right so that is how the linking verb is framed next comes transitive and intransitive verbs okay so here uh, it is important to learn the uh, usage of transitive and intransitive i could explain why because in the last semester i think we have seen uh, active and passive voice direct and indirect speech yes so before going to active and in, uh, in prop, active and passive in, active and passive voice questions we have learned about what is transitive and what is intransitive just in case if you have forgotten i can recall no problem so here what what is standing as a transitive what is standing as a intransitive that's what we are going to see now it is um, one such interesting verbs type actually by looking at the example you can understand the teacher made the question paper peter cut the cake that is what the example that i have given you can understand what is a transitive verb there because that's the only verb standing there and i will mark that once for you here made is the transitive verb right made cut right so what make them so special transitive verbs transitive verbs are something that will always require some object to complete its meaning okay it can't stand alone it is not independent it is always requiring some direct object to complete its meaning that's what the transitive verb so in other words you can just translate this back to the other way around okay you can just convert this how into passive if you are able to convert the sentence into passive then the verb is verb should be transitive yeah so the question paper is made by the teacher the cake is cut by peter okay so this is how we can translate and convert it into passive voice so if you are able to convert a sentence um, then of course transitive verb is present there but then if you are not able to convert then it is a in intransitive verb how because here you can only convert an active to passive if only object is present there okay here you have object as question paper cake question paper is one object cake is one object okay so when you have a direct object and only in that case you will be able to translate an active to passive and the verb should be transitive this is what the whole story of this uh, topic okay so this particular transitive verbs this is what the story and when you have you can see list of examples here for uh, transitive verbs the teacher prized the people prized 
is aging. You can try converting if you have any confusions here. Okay. You will be able to convert because all these sentences have object, right? So pupil is the object here, pair, English, football, part, bicycle, essay. All these are objects. So it always depend on the object to just convert the action. And if ever you want to hear the definition from me, it is thus uh, expressing the action from the subject to the receiver. Okay. So it's just receiving the action. Who is receiving the action? Object is receiving the action. And it's just converting from the subject. So it is expressed from the subject. Price is an action. It is expressed from the subject teacher. And it is just passing on to the object that's it okay so this is how a uh, transitive verb can be explained for you to understand it just expresses an action directed towards a person place or a thing okay so when a sentence is given when you want to identify a transitive verb you just first identify subject and the object okay if subject and object is there and in the middle if transitive if, if, if a verb is that then that is called the transitive verb more easiest way of identifying right and if you have a look at intransitive you will be able to identify the difference as i told in intransitive verb you don't need an object at all exactly opposite to that of the transitive and in this case i don't have an object and it can stand alone that's it okay so other thing is you cannot convert this back you can never convert a tran intransitive verb sentence to passive okay that is what the passive voice right because uh the, the the sentence which have uh, intransitive verbs you can never make them into passive at all okay so take for example you try one sentence mr john speaks loudly how can you convert this no it's not possible right so she is a doctor she is a poet no it's can't it can't be converted they are the compliments doctor poet teacher trainer they are the compliments so it's in a pattern svc subject verb complement those are the types which require no passive voice at all okay in this case you will be having these uh, intransitive verbs so jogs hunter jogs was hiding looks also remember these verbs are not always called as intransitive verbs based on the sentence it is called as intransitive. If you put object after that, then it becomes transitive. Okay. It's not a fixed one. So these uh, verbs we call it as intransitive verbs. Got it? So so far we have seen uh, what is the foundation of verb and uh, types of verbs. And we have completed types of verbs now. So, yeah. So, before getting into the actual topic, I would want you to understand what is direct object and indirect object as well. That's why we call uh, this as double objects. Like in a sentence, uh, that is that is an object which is indirect and there is an there is also an object which is direct okay so for example if i gave something to you okay which means what did i give you the money so the the one that i'm going to give that is the direct one okay direct object so one who is going to receive that they are the indirect right which i'm giving money to you so the receiving end, who is a receiver, they will be called as the indirect object. So my sister gifted me a piece of cake. 
so my sister gift of me um phone so many things so me will become an indirect and the phone or the cake will become a direct object right so that's how we move on here mother is reading michael is story okay who is the receiver here michael so michael will be coming under indirect object right yes ma'am mother is reading michael is story what's being given to them given to michael a story so one one which is directly given to that person that will be direct object so similarly uh, cake will be the direct one also here cup and plate will be the direct object right so who is receiving at the other end me here the same okay so these are the cases guys so uh, this is one such special cases in case if you have uh, two different objects in the sentence and you get confused how uh, to link the verb and all that then in such case you can have this understanding with you okay so that's it for the foundation and the overview of verbs now we are ready to actually get into the topic which is proper form of verb usage okay so from this from now on we will be looking only to the regular and irregular because when i say forms of verbs i what i actually say is that base form base form is uh, is the first one initial one play say uh, link catch match whatever it is that is the base form of the verb okay then comes the second form which is past form of verb and then comes past form of verb you would have heard this right from the school age like uh, kick 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 match matched matched drink drank drunk okay so this is how we learn that right like uh, we used to rhyme these words and we used to uh, keep in mind this is how the second form third form comes we are just going to deep deep dive into that particular topic okay so when it comes to base form let me take um, front is a base form then what is the past form of that ran then what is the past form past participle form of that run ran ran right so this is how uh, this is what the topic is and this um, how we are going to uh, fill in the form of sentence and uh, exactly based on tenses based on singular and plural based on pronouns first person second person and third person these uh, forms differs okay so we are going to learn how to fill this in the sentence when it is blank okay so let us first stop, start with regular and irregular so here one more word i can give you which is blank There is one more form which is present participle. That is the fourth form. Okay, so we'll just concentrate on first three forms today. Okay, so what will be the fourth form present participle do you remember present participle how to make a verb as present participle by just adding ing to it so i'll just turn this into present participle by just adding ing and here i can make it drinking right so this is what the basic structure of forms of verbs first form it is the base form okay run drink match whatever it is it is the base form of verb there is no change in that 
and when you add ed match matched matched kick 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 that turns into past form right so in certain verbs <coughs> you have to follow the past form of the verb by just fully changing the verb itself okay run ran past form and what is the past participle form the same some cases it changed like it is drank drunk okay some case some cases it is same but some cases it is changing and present participle always it is ending with ing there is no doubt in that and there is no confusion okay so there are few other words which have all the three as same there is no change in all the three forms present form sorry base form it is put past form it is put past participle also it is put and present participle we don't use this more often right okay so now you could see right all the three forms are similar okay so there are certain words like this which forms a similar for uh, which follows a similar form in all the three tenses so we we should not say that i had cutted my finger i had uh, put out these clothes on the wardrobe no you can never add ed to the put cut okay so these are the words that remains the same in all the cases so what i call it as regular and irregular what is regular and what is irregular is what we are going to see now so now uh, i told you match matched matched kick 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 right so that is what the regular verbs when you can add ed to the verb and then change it into past form and past participle form those are the regular verbs okay so there are list of commonly used uh, regular verbs which is join joined joined and you can say knock knocked knocked love loved loved and manage managed managed organize organized organized you could see the same pattern okay you you don't see any change at all you are just adding ed to the end to make it past form and past participle form okay so few examples here okay so do you see the same similarity in all the ways right okay so do you see the same pattern followed so these are called as regular verbs so keep a uh, keep a view on this so analyze this properly uh so if at all you can't you need not change anything with the base form then it will come under regular verbs okay but if you have verbs like drive drink as what we have seen here run drink drank drunk okay so first two will come under irregular verbs why because you are changing the entire base form right ran ran and uh, drink drank drunk okay your entire form is being changed then it is irregular verbs it's not an regular form that's why so when it comes to a uh, past and past participle form of um, regular verbs you can follow this particular structure okay when it is a simple past it's the same okay jumped jumped jump jump is the base verb and past form and past participle form will be just adding ed to that and how it changes when it comes to first person second person third person is what given here just have a look at it
you had an understanding of these uh, tenses according to the tenses according to the pronouns and according to the singular and the plural we are concentrating on filling the verbs right so here when it comes to present perfect remember that have or has is used right present perfect has when you use when you use a singular noun he she it he has jumped she has jumped and when it comes to i you we they for all those subjects we use only have jumped got it so we are just recalling all those in one we are recalling tense singular plural and then pronouns first person second person and third person right so i hope the tense recalling is really difficult because you have so many uh, uh, structures right uh, so depending on one tense you have four different types and you have have had did do does all those things and you 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 may have confusion in which tense i have to use does in which tense you have to use did and all that no no worries no issues because um, whenever we look into some topic when that topic comes again when the tense topic comes again we'll recall again no problem at all so it's just a practice little more practice that's needed okay but remember to take note of that column that uh, tense column which tense which uh, structure should be followed all those things when you understand that and when you keep that in mind always so these topics when we recall you will also feel easy to recall right and when it's yeah when it's simple past you don't have anything to be added you just add ed right that's it and when it's uh, past perfect so re do you remember past perfect yeah present perfect and past perfect it, it it's easy to match and learn okay present perfect you will have only have and has and then past form of verb or past participle form of verb but when it comes to past perfect it is just a had alone okay that is what it's past had jumped she had jumped they had jumped you had jumped everywhere it is the same yeah so this is the structure for present perfect and past perfect based on that you are adding a past form and past participle form now based on what we have learned so far i would want you to solve this exercise okay so as usual i'll go with the first question your friends waited for you for over an hour so after this exercise you will understand how verbs are important in learning for forms of verbs okay it's not just a verb how forms of verbs has impact in filling the sentence okay so now it's your turn guys it is not worth dash so much money for this concert pay is your verb so what is the base form is given in the uh, brackets at the end of the sentence you are supposed to just fill in in the blank space here okay so i'm waiting for your answers now for the second one So let me hear who is ready to answer the second question. It is not worth pay is the base verb for you. Just try answering this. These are just a form of exercise. Okay. So moving forward, I'll make you understand how to consider so many uh, factors in filling this particular verb. Good, Tanushri, Spandana, Ranju, Pranav, Chirag, and this is my favorite class from the last semester. Thank you, guys. It is not worth paying. That's correct. Paying is correct. And let me see third one. How many of you is answering correctly? 
yes pragati chandini thank you for answering you guys have been so amazing in interacting but not in the initial minutes where i pleased you to talk alone yeah nobody unmuted nobody ready to unmute your mic and then speak it's okay i gave you time let me wait for the next week okay so i got the answer for the third one so third one i i'll make you understand this is one different type of sentence so that is one thing called a uh, past and past perfect okay so which occurs first past perfect occurs first and only then past occurs okay because before past only past perfect occurred are you sure about that yeah that's correct because occurrence of the action is very important occurrence of the event or that action is very important for you to analyze because here in the third sentence that is playing a role when i reached the station is just past tense but when the person reached the station the train had already left which is the train action is completed train leaving the station is the first action that's completed next only she is reaching the station okay so that is the second occurrence of the action so now decide if the second action is past before that past perfect should occur right so that is why it is not just left it is had left okay because of the occurrence of the action here the time delay is there so that's why we use both past and past perfect in a same sentence i hope you remember this um, i have told about this in the while teaching tenses itself maybe you have forgotten occurrence of the action uh, based on that we just mark them as first action second action so according to this past perfect is first past is the second one okay that based on that it changes and fourth one is easy fifth one is easy let me get the answers from you good it's visited right visited yeah i visited simple past i i visited taj mahal last month it's just happened before and it's a past tense the criminal attacked the same as the previous sentence the same structure right just add ed so these visited attacked and all regular verbs okay um good okay visited and attacked so remaining all our irregular verbs once we complete irregular verbs we'll come back and then solve this okay so here i want to analyze the structure of how irregular verbs are placed based on the tenses pronouns and singular plural okay so here you can have a look at simple past when it's simple past how far it can change drove drove is the simple past so uh, if drove is a past form of the verb what is the base form of the verb drive right past participle is driven so this is one such irregular verb which we are changing the whole structure of the verb itself drive drove driven when it's singular it is um, i drove i cut we drove you drove this is how it comes right but there is no change in simple past there is no change at all or for all sort of first person second person third person it is the same yeah let's uh, let's come to present perfect we have been driven i have been driven you have been driven so that is one such uh, change that we should make have been has been plus uh, past participle form of the verb we use for present perfect tense okay and next past perfect tense what we use the same present perfect and past perfect more or less only one word changes that here if you use have has have been and has been you use for present perfect but you use had been for past perfect that is the only difference for these two okay when it comes to past perfect or does it change
the same. And here it's a third person, right? Yeah. So these are the things that we should consider when it comes to uh, irregular form of verbs. So how irregular form of verbs and uh, it combines with past form and past participle form is what we have seen here. So regarding this exercise, uh, there is there is not more uh, information at all. Um, to be precise, there is no any other structure for it apart from first form, second form, third form, fourth form. Okay, you should understand it is a past form, so I should uh, take this verb drive to draw. So that is how we can learn this structure. Okay. And uh, there, is, there is no more any theoretical part from this particular topic. So we are going to practice more today. OK, so I have a live test as well, live test link as well. So we can take up a test and also we can uh, see how a question is actually formatted. We can get idea of how a question should be right. So now. Next. Next practice for us. Are you ready for the next practice? So we have totally three practice exits and at the finally we have only one test and then we'll close. OK, and then yeah. He usually dash his homework in his room. My base verb is do. OK, so I'll finish the first question alone for you. He usually does his homework in his room. This is one such simple present tense so that I'm adding a verb does. OK, that is what the exact fit here. Can you try from the second one, please? The doctor told him to stop. Your base form of verb is smoke. Try changing that. Stop what? Smoking. That's right. Good, Shushmita, Spanjana, Suma, Shivada, Stanushri, Sahana, Pradyu, Pradyumna. Yeah, thank you guys. Let's go on to the third question now. Could you dash me please? Sometimes, you know, like these kind of sentences, base form will stay the same, okay? Because this is not past form, this is not past participle form at all. Though you have the form, help, help, help. You have the form, but then here you need to use the base form as such. Okay, because it's a model question, right? Model for verb, could is a model verb, right? Model axillaries. So you don't have to change any sentence form here, tense form here, okay? So help. I have decided spaces here. I have decided your base form of verb is study. Good. Shivda, Spandana, good, very good. Okay, so these are the infinitive type of verbs. Do you understand that? Infinitive verbs when you have two plus verb that is called infinitive right so in some places you may you might have to use this infinitive verbs in some places you might have to use gerund verb plus ing i have decided to study that's correct let me hear the last question let me leave the classroom yeah because Here also it stays the same because it's a suggestion. Let me suggestion type of question, right? Good. You don't need to change the form at all here. Nice. Next, we'll move on to the last five questions of this uh, exercise then. Here.
What about the sixth one? Yeah, again here you have to fill in with infinitive verbs because he wants Mary. Uh, so he wants Mary. Do the dishes? No, it will be uh, not making any sense to the sentence. He wants Mary does the dishes. Did the, no, it's not fitting at all, right? So he wants Mary to do the dishes. That will be the correct fit here. And what about seventh one? D. To do is correct. Thank you, all of you. Likit, Tanushri, Sanjana, Nikita. Let's move on to the seventh question. She. You should combine these two. Not, uh, not specify. Sometimes your question will be uh, having options like this, which is meaning that do is the verb, and you should make that negative. Okay, you should add not to it and then put in here. How can I do that? Any idea? To do not done so many answers. I'll explain. She did know. Did not do or didn't do. You can put apostrophe as well. Whatever your wish didn't do and uh, did not do is the same. She did not do any bad thing yesterday. I am sure this is how you uh, take the form from the brackets. Yes, from the brackets. Yes, it's confusing. What is the exact verb? But this is how we make it. OK, she did not do any bad thing since it is yesterday. It is a past tense. So past form of do is did. OK, so remember that. Didn't do. Yes, it's correct. Next, we'll move on to the eighth one. They. Yeah, so here you have another clue, which is next week, right? So it's a future. So they will come next week. That will be correct. They will come here. Good. They will come here next week. That's correct. Would you mind? And yeah, I'll wait for the answers from you for the ninth one. Would you mind? Here is the space for you. Ash the window, please. It's hot here. I told you, right? Gerund in some places. Yeah, the same here. Would you mind opening the window will be correct. All right, and the last one. Had they. See from the word had you can fix this as. Past participle, right? Past participle form of leave is left. Had they left your husband before you came here? Got it. Yep, you're all right, and we have successfully completed two practice exercise. So good of you. And yeah. Now we'll have a look at. So as you have solved the practice exercise very successfully, we'll soon move on to the test after a uh, few more uh, slides that we have to look in. OK, few more uh, structures that we have to look. Yeah, I'll go with confusing verbs first, then we'll come back to uh, commonly used irregular verbs because that's an exercise again. So what I call as confusing verbs is that some cases uh, we miss the meaning actually. So we we in case we may add a different uh, past form and different past participle form eh, by mistake. Yes, because we don't understand the meaning because we misunderstood that is another word. In that case, it may go wrong. So for that to be fixed, you should understand there are certain verbs. What's the meaning of that? OK, so first when you understand what's the verb, you should understand the meaning as well. And then go through the uh, sentence accordingly to the sentence. 
you check if it is exact fit or not. Take for example, affect and effect. So many people are getting confusion in this affect and effect. Got it? Affect is something that uh, you are getting affected, which is just a, just a consequence or it's just an impact. OK, that is what you are affected. You are affected by so and so disease. You are affected by mental health. That is what you are affected. Like effect is something that uh, we have. Uh, um, OK, so this plan has not come into effect, which is imposed by the government. OK. So that is how we use effect in the sentence. Effect is nothing but it's a practice. It has not yet come into practice. Still now it, it is on the progress. It has not yet come into effect. OK, so it is still in progress. In that case, we can use. Otherwise, we can uh, effect some changes. In that case, we can use this effect. So understand the meaning because of one letter we may go wrong. OK, in past form and past participle form. Why I'm telling this because affect and effect the ED form is the same. But when in the sentence, sometimes you may go wrong, like in, instead of affected may uh, we may confuse with affected. But I want you to tell about the first two words. Have a look at first two words. I, I think you can understand the meaning rise and rise. Yeah, rise is all about sunrises in the east to get up to move up. That's what OK. Raise is different, which is only for increasing the quantity, increasing the number we use rates. Yeah, but then see. Rise and raise in past form and past participle form. It is different. That is how I gave you this confusing words. OK. If it is rice, the past form is rose and past participle form is risen. But if it is raise, it is just ad. It's a regular verb. Raise is a regular verb, rise is irregular verb. OK, so, so there are so many things like this. So many verbs like this which may confuse us. Why we should learn about that meaning is that in past form and past participle form, they are different. OK, both are not same in some cases. So that's why I'm uh, telling you repeatedly. Please have a look at this. These kind of verbs. OK. Shall we check the learning here? OK, how far we have. Uh, understand how can we get how far we can match it with the sentence? OK, the same words which which are here. Sit, set, raise, rise. OK, based on that these examples are given. OK, so shall we try matching it with the. Exact word with the sentence. OK, my family dash 10 acres of corn last summer. So what's your answer here? Yeah, rose is completely wrong here, right? Because rose, I told you only for get up, move up. But if you use quantity, it is raised. Correct. Yeah, so that's the correct answer. Yes, guys, you're making it right. Next. For the second one, we cannot let these changes. We cannot let these changes affect our decision. Yes, of course. Good. OK, next prices will rise or raise or rise in during next quarter. It's raise, right? Because it will increase. Raise is all about quantity increase. Am I right? Raise will raise. Rises to 
get up to move up rises in the east that is what we call rise okay again i think you are making a confusion here r a i s e meaning that take a first sentence for example it's always increase in quantity okay take a look at here to get up to move up that is what rise raises to lift up to increase in amount so of uh, overall marketing shareholding uh, revenue projects uh, increasing the amount of employees wherever you want you can use rise and coming to the fourth one What is correct? Hanged or hung? Hanged is correct. Yeah, good. So now, and yeah. I'll make this as correct. According to economists, the new strategies will surely affect a change. As I told you, uh, when you when you want to make uh, make some something into practice, make some change into effect, that's where we use this effect. Got it? So we can proceed from six. Good, good. Yeah, I really appreciate all of your efforts in putting the answers. Thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, keep going. Question number six. John was. It's it's uh, it's clear that it should be sitting. OK, so there is no confusion here. John was sitting in his favorite chair during the home invasion. She has been setting out flowers or all afternoon. Yeah. There is no confusion here. It's correct. The new law. What about the eighth one? Again, I feel like confusing. What about the eighth one? The new law. Affected or affected? Good. The new law has been imposed and affected changes in the current tax regulations. Cool. OK, so we have completed this and uh, one more thing I wanted to tell you before going to attend the test. Because test is like 20 questions we have to uh, score 20. Let's let's see we together can we answer or we can score 20 or less than 20. We can see that. But before that, I would want to make you clear of. Choosing the past form and past participle form because that's what this exercise is meant for. OK, so you should be very clear of picking up the right past form, right past participle form. So I told you we'll I'll go back to the irregular when you're done with irregular. OK. So here I have a set of. Set of words for you. I think we have done the same exercise when uh, when we are looking into tenses, right? So those 12 form of tenses, it is actually mandatory uh, for us to understand what's the past form past participle form present participle form all that so we practiced this before i just have other set of words which we can fill here and then we can move on to test okay it's just a warm up warm up again okay for you i have given the first answer for you give gave given and let's move on from the second these are the set of irregular verbs which in uh, 
why they are called as irregular verbs is that they are total form changes. OK, it's not just adding ED work. It is more than that. OK. Go. Past form and past participle form. It's not gone, went, it is went, gone. Past form is went and past participle form is gone. OK. Good. Yeah. Jessica, yes, thank you. Uh, grow, grew, grown. That's correct. What about hit? What's the past form of hit and what's the past participle form of hit? Yep. Hit remains same. Good, very good. OK, so I told you there are certain words which will never uh, change the form. In all the tenses, hit, cut, put. These are the certain words. OK, so what about like? Lie, lied, lied. That's wrong. And thanks for your attempt. Lie, the past form is lay. Past participle form is lane. This is some different uh, verb, I understand. So this is how it varies. Lie, past form is lay, past participle form is lay. OK. There are two different lie. OK, so you should understand that as well. Lie, when it comes to lie, lie down, lay down. That is what I, I meant it here. OK, lies, when you tell lies, that is different. And what about ride and shake? Good. Road ridden. That's right. Next, the last one. Shake. Shook, shaken, shook. OK. This is similar to forsake, forsook, forsaken, right? So uh, some words have similar patterns that they can follow. OK, so th learning those words and keeping those words in mind will help us solve better. Like you uh, collect the words which uh, stays the same in all the forms like hit, put, cut, collect those kind of words and then separate it. You just note it down and then um, a separate pattern, you know, uh, forsake, shake, shook, like that. And even uh, swim, swam, swam, swing, swang, swung. So they follow the similar pattern, right? To change it into post and past participle and all. So collect those words and keep it separately, and then uh, you can start learning about that. So instead of memorizing all those at once, you can collect these. That will be easy, easier for you to remember. And uh, Yeah, I think we are uh, ready to take the test now. Uh, before that, I'll just open it and then.
Yes, in order to share this uh, um, ask if you have any issues uh, viewing the screen or my audio, please let me know. So I think we are ready to proceed. OK. So yeah. So these are some uh, so like from the starting, you have all answered correctly and you didn't have any doubts. You didn't have any lag in answering. So I just thought of giving you some advanced questions. So these are the uh, examination point of view questions. Uh, so I think you can uh, just practice here. Even if you're not able to answer or if you have confusions, it's completely fine. Um, so once you give me the answer, I'll just mark here. OK, so the first question here I have is hardly had we reached the school, what will be the answer? Like what completes the sentence next? It's all about right form of verbs. OK, so this whole exercise is all about filling the right form of verb according to the tense or anything else. OK, so yes, Shushmita, thank you. That's correct. OK, so hardly had we reached the school when the bell rang. That's correct. So when you use words like scarcely, hardly, barely, all these things followed by had, it will always have the second half of the sentence with starting with when. OK. Next, um, yeah, the second question. I hope you will answer this because it's a proverb, right? So if when it's a proverb, failures or the stepping stone to success, there are proverbs with gerund. OK, so it's ING, right? That's correct. A rolling stone gathers no moss. That's correct. Next. Third question will reveal how far you remember the subject verb agreement. Yeah, let me see how many of you remember subject verb agreement. I wish I dash a child again. Your third question is I wish I dash a child again. So what's correct among this? Yeah, few right answers among you. Few of them remember SVA, which is subject verb agreement. This is one such. Uh, exception, right? This is one such exception to the rule, which is um, wishful statement. I told you if it is a wishful statement, if I were a bird, if I were the prime minister of India, so many things around. So we use were here. Next, lack of exercise and high fat diets have dash to be factors in heart attack, which fits best. So you just pick all the options and then just um, analyze what fits best. Yes, where is correct? Siddhant, Likit, Vikas, Arpita, Vishwas. Thank you so much. We'll move on to the next, which is fourth question. Yeah. You're brilliant, Shushmita. Lack of exercise and high fat diets have uh, long been known to be the factors in heart attack. That's right. 
but when you add have been long that that doesn't make any sense have been long known to be factors no that that's not fit at all it's just uh, rearranged right so it looks like rearranged so you can eliminate options which don't fit well in case if you have confusion which to pick right and yeah move on to fifth question this is also a format kind of question there is two such scenario that has been compared okay so look into that carefully fifth one writing a beautiful sonnet is as much as an achievement as Good, Shushmita, Meghana. I actually thought it's a tough question, but then you girls did it. Writing a beautiful sonnet is as much as an achievement as it is to finish a 400-page novel. It's correct. Good. Next, again, uh, you have to bring in the SBA knowledge, subject verb agreement knowledge and the rules. Let me see for the sixth one. Am I getting the right answer or not? Read slowly, read slowly the sentence and then understand whether you should use has or have. OK. What does the collective noun says in SBA? Has OK, how? Because by the, at the by the moment you see apples, you may think that it's plural, but it is just a one basket. OK, so if it is singular, if it is one single basket. It is singular. So you should use has. OK. And even though apart from that, a rule is there, which is for collective noun, we always use singular verb, right? OK, so the seventh one. The doctor suggested that the patient dash wait. Should lose. It is just a suggestion guys because. Um, you could see from here suggested OK, uh, if it is a rec if it is an order or if it is um, something else that is strict from the verb we can understand but from the verb here I understand it is just a suggestion so the doctor suggested that the patient lose weight will be uh, less uh, rude because should lose is that so strong in frequency and uh, when you use suggest it's just a suggestion right yeah OK, no problem. Next. Mm, yeah, much as Rome dash roads through Europe in the years of Roman Empire. This is the first incident. I'll give you a clue. This has happened so fast because in the years of Roman Empire, that is the first incident. Next comes the second incident. British dash railways and strung telegraph wires in India. So based on this. At Occurrence of event. OK, first, second, then you fix the verb. So now let me know. If it is the first incident that too in the past, it should be past perfect, right? If it is a second incident, then, then it should be simple past. Get it? So based on this understanding, let me see if you're answering. Good, very good. Much as Rome had built roads to Europe in the years of uh, Roman Empire, British built railways on the strong telegraph wires in India. Next. Moving on to the ninth one, the skill of safe driving.
also it's a rule so remember that so question number 9 um when it's a rule it's always a present uh, form of thing right so those will not have any change in tense at all those sentences so remember that skill of safe driving yeah good is necessary to avoid collision which hurt many thousands of people annually and what about the tent we'll stop with 15 and we'll end the class no problem at all i understand how uh, you feel at the saturday evening the 2:30 i completely understand the mentality so we'll stop till 15 we'll rush it up yeah so what about the clothing here clothing made by bangladeshi workers or dashed by millions of consumers around the world good own okay it is not dressed it's own the rabbits scurried away in fright it is just a simple past okay so what's your answer d good 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 i'll go first next glasses can correct most sight defects in healthy eyes when well fitted that will be the correct one yeah good again the d option when well fitted glasses can correct most side defects in healthy eyes so you should not take well fit glass as the same uh, noun glasses can correct most side this is a separate one you should take this as separate one when well fitted glasses can correct most side defects next if you don't mind i would rather not it's a simple one right i would rather not go that's right good you are nearing the last two questions of this class i would rather that sorry this is misplaced so we'll skip this we'll go with 15 and 16 here he is one of the boys he is one of the boys see the third option will never come at all you can eliminate this because have written the letter you cannot use have for single person right so you, should, you can avoid this but uh, you if you tell sorry he is not added here he is one of the boys who have written the letter is correct because it's among the boys he's one okay so since that is used it's plural here when you read it together 
of the boys who have written the letter he is one among them okay so you should take a boys as the noun here so among the boys who have written the letter he is one among them okay sorry to disturb you with that next the promising boy did not spoil a single moment dash develop any bad habit the first option it is not she it is he okay so it's a mistake here it's not did he so what's for 16th one 16th one the promising boy did not spoil a single moment see uh, did not if you can uh, understand did not is the past tense right so it should be past and ending with past as well it should not come to present tense like does remember that okay so uh, the first of you you can clearly understand that did not is the past did not spoil a single moment nor did he develop any bad habit this is not she this is he nor did he develop any bad habit and next gradually all of us are i think i got the answer somewhere a this is present tense right it is going on now this action is going on now 17th one so accordingly you can fit in the right form of verb there 17th one what about 17 or getting accustomed to use the internet or getting accustomed to using the internet so this is how actually uh, in email writing i think this plays a main main role like um, when you use uh, when you start with something something verb which starts with ing you should also continue with verbs using ing okay so that is how here it changes get accustomed getting accustomed to using it should be the proper format throughout the sentence yeah i am waiting to hearing from you i am waiting to uh, hear from you is um, right but i am waiting to hearing from you that is also correct because the format which is used at the this is what we use at the end of the email right so usually when when it starts with one particular format it should also follow the same format throughout the sentence for the verbs that's what it's used here and what about the yeah it's correct most of them answered c good good last three questions of the class professor dun will not be able to attend the meeting tonight because it's it's very sure that it's future tense and it accordingly you could place a verb yeah it's it's going to over he will be teaching a class good which of the following sentences is correct sorry by mistake i tick this she proceeded as though i had not spoken this is the correct sentence okay jacksona was asked to withdraw from the graduate school because the last one this is really difficult i understand she was deemed incapable of completing her research because it it seems like all of them is a good fit um here there is an adverbial class that's why uh, it should complete it should complete with the same structure right 
Raksana was asked to was deemed incapable of completing her research. So yes, I could see there is no so much lagging in answering these questions, though it's an advanced uh, form of questions. And I could see so many have answered like out of 20, at least 14 to 15. So many have answered. So I'm happy about that really. And um, coming back to the final touch. Yes, guys, I remember most of your names uh, because while you answering only I got to know uh, this is uh, these are the names I was so familiar with from the last semester. So you people are so amazing and in interacting except the first few minutes in answering. You are the best. OK, so thank you, ma'am. Eat you all amazing people. Enjoy your Sunday. Be safe. Be happy. Eat well. Sleep well. OK, bye bye. Hi, ma'am. Have a nice day, ma'am. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you, Mukti, ma'am.